It's a it's a shame tonight, really, because for 20 years this would have been the best matchup of the of the week, easily probably of the season. Um, and that's probably because seven and 12 were on the field, and and now they're not. Um, is it? Can we safely say that um, the Patriots and Steelers have missed on their first round quarterbacks? And how far does that set you back? What do you think is going to happen tonight, well, too? Uh, I, I don't know. You know, look, I, I don't think the Steelers think they missed on Pickett. I think they're still involved in it. I think they're going to keep going down this road. I, I think a lot of America thinks they have. I'm not sure the Steelers internally have. I think New England has come to the realization mm-hmm. after three seasons, rarely do you ever see a quarterback play as well as a, as he did as a rookie and then yep. not play well now. I mean, that, that trajectory never happens in, in football, yet it has. But there were moments as a rookie – that Mac made a lot of mistakes in Indianapolis as an example. You know, mm-hmm. two bad interceptions in the middle eight in that game, ultimately coming off a seven game win streak, cost them. And those mistakes, although as a rookie look like you could overcome them, have creeped up in his third season. So they haven't gone away. And I think it's fairly obvious that they can't get the ball down the field. You could say they don't have skilled players, all that, but they, they, you have to conclude beyond a reasonable doubt that they need a quarterback. I'm not sure Pittsburgh's at that same point, depending on where they are. To me, I, I thought Pittsburgh, if they had Kirk Cousins on this team, if they had a Kirk Cousins on this team, where Pickett could still develop if he had that ability, then, you know, you got a chance to move forward really quickly. I love Ben. Love him. Oh, yeah. Hard not to. Way to go, Ben. Love the you. best. And football. Love football and with Ben Roethlisberger. But his last couple of years, I mean, we were not really playing football, you know. We were throwing the ball as soon as, boom, bang, yeah. pow. Right there. Well, if okay. you had, remember the year the Duck, love Duck, Duck. Quack, 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 love quack. Duck. Sure. I love the Ducks there. Yeah, we, we went to, we traveled to Pittsburgh yeah. to watch the Duck show yeah. live. He landed on his feet. We, yeah. Yes, he certainly has. Yeah. And we are incredibly proud of Duck. But if you think about Kirk Cousins or one of those types of quarterbacks, and whenever we say those types of quarterbacks, we don't mean this as a shot. We're just talking about somebody that just like actually is in here just to be a point guard, manage the game. Let's just move. Like, we don't need to turn the ball over. Let's just kind of move. With those Steelers defenses, with how great they have been, I feel like. That's why Pittsburgh fans are po- finally at the point where they're like, we're sick of this. That's why Matt Canada, first time getting fired since what? In the middle of the season, 19 what? Was the first, last time they fired uh, it coach was or four, coordinator? It was 40 something. It, it was the owner who fired himself as the coach. Yeah. Smart guy. It's crazy. These are two stories. You know franchises. what's amazing about TJ Watt, though, with, oh, when yeah. you say that, is the fact that Watt's able to get this many sacks and this much pressure for a team that never plays from in front. Right. I mean, that's Mm. really remarkable when you think about it, because ultimately what you want to do is is what Kyle's trying to do in San Francisco. Kyle's in a mad dash to get the lead. He wants to throw it fast, get ahead and then let those guys that he has the strength of his team excel. It's what Philly did last year. It's it's really the West Coast offense. That's what the West Coast offense is. It's not smash seven curl. It's not 20 bingo cross. It's we're going to throw the ball to get the lead. And we're going to have our defensive line rush the passer to create turnovers. That's the essence of what the man was trying to accomplish in San Francisco. And he did. And I think what Pittsburgh's not been able to do is play from in front. And Watt still is tremendous. Highsmith is still tremendous. They're still able to get pressure on the passer. And they're in these tight, close games, which I think is a great tribute to them. I don't want to go, to echo your point, I don't want to go back to Dwight Freeney uh, and just keep doing this and banging this drum. But that's how Bill Polian built the Colts. That's literally how he yep. built the Colts. Like, offense, we're going to spend money, a lot of it. Quarterback, weapon, tight end. What? Running back, we're yeah. going to have a couple great ones. We're going to do this entire thing. We're going to get the lead. And then we got Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis. And they're just going to meet at the quarterback. And that's how this whole thing is going to go. And that was what led to the most successful decade in NFL history for the Indianapolis well, Colts. Well, think about the do- – he played in the Dome. Oh, RCA yeah. Dome here. All those sacks came at home, right, Lombo? I mean – Oh, crowd no, noise. That's right. Oh, well. No, that, yeah, that that was the real that, crowd noise. Yeah. Well, well, that was a Hoosier screaming. Yeah. yeah, through the speakers, maybe. Well, I mean, but that was the whole. That was the whole deal. You, God. 
when you have a dome team that that can play can rush the passer, and one of the things that I've always thought, if you were building a dome team, if you were a size B dome team, it really enhanced yourself. I mean, think of the great Viking teams when they moved from the Metro Metro Park and the Metropolitan Stadium into the John Metro Randall. Dome, right? Yeah. They they had great Randall, uh, you know, Chris Dolman. I mean, they could really get after it, and that snap count. Now, back then, we were not as good with the silent count as we are today. So it has helped a little bit, but that snap count is the advantage that the offense has. And when you neutralize that advantage, when you can do that by the crowd noise, you should not be able to run the ball on any good dome team because the defense should gain the line of scrimmage immediately. Hey, did you um, did you hear Tone Diggs yesterday on our program? I know you were hosting your show, so you might have missed it. Um, he actually kind of said that maybe – Akersher wouldn't be sold out tonight. That yeah, is what he, he said. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. He, like, said that. I can't believe that. Confidently. Uh, yeah, oh, I, I, we were mind blown yes. by it, Lombo. Uh, but that's that's what he was saying. That's where we're at right now with the Pittsburgh Steelers organization. Now, uh, it's uh, filled they're up. They're in the rut. They're in the hunt. They're in the playoff. They can still get there. But, I mean, I know it doesn't look pretty, but, you know, we don't grade these things on the beauty contest. I mean, they're – they Longer. they're still a hard team to play. I mean, they're they're good. For, the front's good. Michael. Look, last week was disappointing. I was on them. I thought they would beat the Steelers. I agree Arizona, with what Bill yeah. Cowher said. Fourth fourth and one fourth and inches from the goal line, and the shotgun. Pittsburgh Steelers are in shotgun. I mean, come on. It's genius, uh, Lombo. You know, I mean, you were with the Patriots for a long time. Steelers fans for a long time. It's not about making the playoffs and losing in the first round of the playoffs. Like that's that's not what we're here for. And you know that. Yeah. Yeah, well, I know that. And also, I know the last time I worked in Cleveland in 89 was the last time the Browns finished ahead of them. Mm -hmm. That's how good they are in terms of being able to maintain their Oh, maybe they're a little spoiled is what Lombo just said. That's what Lombo just said. Maybe. (laughs) sounded like Maybe a little spoiled. That's like the year we went uh, 2-14 and whenever we found out that Peyton's neck was going to be broken, uh, literally in training camp, and he wasn't going to be able to play. There was Colts. They showed up. Showing up with bags over their head. That's right. And it was like, yeah. tell you, you're real rich. Yeah. Real rich. One year, things don't go and then right. They get, and then they get Andrew Luck. I mean, think about that. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah, I, mean, New England, I love they football have to fans. Suffer yeah. through it. I love football fans. They're the best. And Akersher will be packed out tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Pittsburgh oh, yeah. will show up for football. That just primetime NFL football. They will show up. Tony, what's the head? Tony. Tone's talking to people with season tickets, I think. Yes. That, it, 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 they is that, heard some things. Oh, no. If there's yellows, if that looks like a pit, University of Pittsburgh football game. The New England Patriots, who won six Super Bowls in the last 20 years. And they went to 11. They had 25,000 people at the stadium last week. Yeah, it wasn't prime 000. time. 20, it wasn't prime time. That's right. 25,000 is, is generous. This is prime time. This is like a city showcase it almost. Is. That's what that's what happens. Yeah. There was nobody at that point. 2,500, no, no. I think, no, is what I'm you meant. I'm just worried they're going to treat this like the old school Thursday night football on, on NFL when uh, it was, you know, like color rush Jags Titans. Okay, well, the issue here is, and now that we're thinking and talking about it, it's like Patriots fans aren't traveling to Pittsburgh to watch this game. No. no. So, like, normally the assist you could potentially get from the other team, like the Patriots fans aren't even showing up at home. No. And they've paid thousands and thousands of dollars for season tickets. Right. Oh, no. Yeah, they're, not, they're not showing up. These are fan bases letting their teams know. This ain't how we play football around here. No. Yeah. And it, it needs to be heard. It needs to be heard loud and clear. But Tony just added another great wrinkle to this game. Let's put the color of Rush uniforms Should on be. the line, too. Why do, when were we the Bumblebee tonight? Yeah. The Steelers wearing the Bumblebee? Listen, we're going to put a Lombardi on the line today. What? The losing coach uh, immediately becomes a defense coordinator for the other team. But oh, we're fired. Okay, forward. that's not and then, bad. Yeah, we'll do color rush. And, yeah. and, and the owners have to take a snap at running back yes. and a snap at middle linebacker. And also a renegade shipping up to Pittsburgh. 